So I have two goals with this code example. The first is to demonstrate in general um, how to write a function where we have to allocate a stack. And this function we do have to allocate a stack because it calls other functions. Um, so if nothing else, we need to save the return address. Um, but in particular, I'm going to end up showing you two ways you can write this code. The first of which I'm going to use caller saved registers, and the second time I'll use callee saved registers. And I'll demonstrate the benefit in the circumstances in which you might want to use callee saved registers. But I'll start first with call, caller saved registers. So as always, I'm going to start my code um, with a label, and I'm going to start my code right here. Um, and recognize the fact that my arguments are going to be passed in through the A registers. And my return value is going to come back, going to be sent out in the V register. So because I know this function is calls other functions, therefore I'm going to need to allocate a stack the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to allocate a stack frame. And I don't know at this point how big that stack frame should be, so I'm not going to set the size of it. Um, that as I add variables to the stack frame, um, once I get to the end of the code and I know how many things I have to save on the stack, then I'll know how big the stack frame is going to be. Um, I know right away there's at least one thing that I'm going to need to save to the stack, and that's the return address. And so I'm going to go ahead and save that right away. Now I'm looking at the code, and this function in particular not only calls functions, but it calls functions in this while loop. And so what that means is that any, in general, when you have a function, any variables that you're going to use after the call to the function, you're going to need to save them somehow. Because um, the especially in the case of using caller saved registers, anything that we want live after a call, we need to have saved. Um, and so if we look at this code, um, in particular, there's a number of, of variables that are going to need to be live after this first call to two lower. Um, the first of which is S1, because uh, although this use of S1 um, is, is needed before the call to the function, that if we go around and we do a second iteration of the loop, we're going to need S1 again. Likewise, S2, um, S2 is even simpler because the first use of S2 is after the first call to two lower. So we definitely know that's going to need to be saved to be used. Furthermore, the variable i is defined on one side of two lower, and it's used on the other side. And so that's going to need to be saved. In addition, C1 is the return value from the first call to two lower, and it's used after the second call to two lower. So we're going to need to save C1, and that might be it. So we're going to start writing the code um, with that in mind. But we know, if we inspect the code, that S1 and S2 never change in the code. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save them once here at the beginning of the code up front. Um, and once I've saved them, since they aren't changed by the code itself, I'm never going to need to save them again elsewhere in the code. And so I'm going to allocate them to the next two slots in this stack frame. So that uh, handles these two. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start allocating i. And so since I'm using caller saved registers, I'm going to go ahead and allocate i into t0. So initially i is 0, and so I'm going to allocate it to t0, and then we get into the loop. And so I'm going to say ci loop, and so I'm going to have to call this thing to two lower, but uh, before I do that, I need to set up, I need to read the character from this array. So stepping back, what does this code do? We pass in two character arrays, also known as strings, and this one is supposed to put them, say which one of them is alphabetically before the other. And so we compare the string, the characters, uh, one at a time in the string. If they're the same, we go on and look at the next character. 
But the first character that diverges, we're going to compare, subtract the value of that character from, from the first string to the second string to compute which of these two strings um, is earlier in alphabetical order. And the one twist that we have here that's different than the C function uh, stir compare is that we want to do it case insensitive manner. And so we first call this two lower function, which is a standard C function, which takes capital characters and capitalized characters and converts them to lowercase. Um, so we first have to read the character, and we do that by adding the address of S1 to the value i, because each character is a single byte. Um, S1, we're going to rely on the fact that we save that uh, onto the stack. And so I'm going to go ahead and load the value of S1. So I know I saved S1 and S2 into four, the four offset of the stack and the eight offset of the stack. So to get S1, I need to load that back. And basically, I'm doing the exact opposite operation. It, you see this code is exactly the same here. Well, I'm using a different register here, but instead of a store word, I'm using a load word. So that gets me S1, and then I can add can add this T1 with T0, which is in, which is I, um, and that gets me the address of S1I, and then I don't want the address, I want the actual character, and uh, since I'm passing this into a function, I'm going to load this directly into A0, save myself a copy. So I'm going to, so I've got the address, and to read the character, I need to do a load byte using that address. So that gets me S1i. Um, I'm not quite ready to call to lower because I have this value t0, which I haven't saved yet. And t0 being a caller saved register, would, it's getting get killed by the call, the jump and link. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save t0 at this point. And I'm going to just grab the next stack slot, which is a 12 offset of the stack pointer. So I'm saving i, and now I can do a jump and link to, to lower. And what happens is that the return value of to lower is c1. And so what, since I know that that was v0 is a caller saved register and it's going to get killed by the next call to to lower, I'm just going to go ahead and save that right away. So v0 I'm going to save into 16 offset of the stack time. So I'm going to save C1. Now I can work on the second call of two lower. I'm going to basically do the same thing. Um, I'm going to load S2 into T1. So S2 is at the eight offset of the stack pointer. Give me S2. Um, this case, I don't have i in a register. Since this killed t0, I have to load i again. So I'm going to load t0. i is in an off 12 offset of the stack pointer. That gets me i back. And I can then add these two together, t1 and t0 together, to get the address of s2i. And then I can load can load that value again into A0 because I know I'm going to very soon call that function, um, which this is an argument. So that's S2i. And at this point, I don't need to save i again because it hasn't changed since the last time I saved it. So you can see I loaded i, but I haven't written to i, that there's no changed value of i here. That happens down here. Um, so I don't need to save it again, because saving it would just uh, be extra work, and it wouldn't um, actually change the value in memory. So I'm going to not do anything more than I need to do, and I'm going to call to lower. And this time, when it returns, v0 has the value, the c2 value. So when I return from there, now I'm ready to do this if statement. And again, I'm going to use my standard rule for ifs. So I'm going to invert the condition to skip over the loop. And so I want to do a branch if not equal C1 and C2, but currently C1 is on the stack. And so before I can uh, before I can work with C1, I have to first load it off the stack. And I saved it at 16 
offset of the stack pointer. And that brings it in. Now I'm prepared. I can actually do this comparison. I can do a branch not equal of T1 and V0. And if they're not equal, I can go to CI done. So now I'm in the this special case. I want to increment I. Again, The since this jump in length killed T0, I have to load it off the stack again. So I'm going to do a load word into T0. And the reason why I'm putting it into T0 in particular is because that way, if I leave it there, when it comes around the loop again, uh, this code can expect it to be in T0. So I'm going to load this off. Where did I put I? I was in a 12 offset of the stack pointer. And I'm going to increment it by adding 1 to it. And at this point, we've handled this. And so we're ready to do the continue, which is just a jump back to CI loop. So we've handled the code up to here. Now we have to handle the return case, which is CI done. And we're returning C1 minus C2. Since I haven't done a call since this point, um, those, those things are still in uh, T1 and V0. So I want to uh, reproduce the new return value V0 by taking C1, which is in T1, and subtracting V0 from it. So that'll give me C1 minus C2. I'm almost done, except I have to fix up the stack. And at this point, since I'm basically done, I know how many things I've saved onto the stack. And so I've saved the return address, S1, S2, um, I, and C2. So I've saved five things. Each of them are four bytes big. So that means my stack frame is 20 large. Most of these things I don't need to load back in. The one in particular that I do need to load back in is RA, because I need that before I can do the, the return statement. So I'm going to load that back using, again, exactly the opposite of what I used to save it. The only difference is the load word character or the L in the load word versus store word. And then I'm going to fix up the stack. And so I'm going to use the opposite of this subtract statement to do an add of SP and SP and 20. And then I'm ready to do a jump register. And that completes the code.